So he's acting up again. I want you to wake me up. I don't care if I have to work. You're more important than work. I don't want you to be alone when it's like this. Just feel me. I've got you, sweetheart. Do you want to talk about it? No, I don't have to. I can just hold you and stroke your hair. Whisper sweet nothings into your ear until you feel better. Seven Nation Army couldn't get to you right now. Know why? Because I've got you in my arms. Huh? And I won't let anyone hurt a single hair on your head. Mm. How about head scratches? Stop being silly. I don't mind. You know I love scratching your head. Mm. How 
sort of feel. thing on earth that could touch you right now. Nothing's gonna get to you. They'd have to go through me. And even though I'm sleepy, I'm pretty formidable still. <laughs> Although if it's a shark trying to get to you, you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not messing with a shark. If there's some land shark, some new species, and it decides that you look absolutely delicious, which I can sympathize with, you're gonna be on your own because I don't like sharks. Or the water. Mm, I hate open water. I've never even been in the ocean. <laughs> Have you ever been in a swimming pool and dunked your head and closed your eyes? And for a second, <laughs> it feels like you're in some deep, dark place and there are sharks all around you. No, just me. <laughs> what can I say? I'm a crazy person. <laughs> yes, I'm crazy about you. Just breathe, darling. Is, is there anything I can get you? Mm. No, I won't leave you. I'm never gonna leave you. I'm never gonna let you go. I'm never gonna give up and run around or hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yes, I'm rickrolling you right now. At least I think those are the lyrics. It's been a long time since I got rickrolled. <laughs> it's gonna be alright. It'll pass. Anxiety always does. Just one of those things you have to wait out. But it does help having someone wrap their arms around you. Mm. Yeah. Of course. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you feel my weight on you? Mm. Just feel my body pressed against yours. You've got the bed underneath you and me on top. I'll be your shield from bad thoughts. Or anything else. I wish I could fight this for you. If there's any, if there was any way I could take this on, I would. But if all I can do right now is just hold you and tell you how much I love you. 
Now I'm always going to keep you safe. That's what I'll do. I don't care for a week all night. I'm with you to the end of the line. You know that. What can I do for you? How can I help you? I'm telling you a story. I'm not good at telling stories, you know that. about the time I was staying on a farm. <laughs> no, this is actually a good one. I think you'll like it. So I remember when I was staying at that farm for a friend. Well, I had two horses and a bunch of cats around. Anyways, one day <laughs> I looked out the window and it's not funny. I don't know why I'm laughing. I looked at the window and I saw a cat walking around inside the fenced in area, the electric fenced in area, with a can on its head. And the two horses were freaking out, like losing their mind scared. They kept running up to it, trying to stomp on it and run away. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's not funny, the cat really could have been hurt. <laughs> so anyway, me being me, I go haul an ass towards the barn and turn off the electric fence go running out of the barn and dive under it. <laughs> and as the horse is charging, this <laughs> poor cat with a can stuck on its head, <laughs> just wandering around <laughs> in circles, falling over. He was trying to stomp it. He was really trying to kill it. It was terrible. <laughs> anyway, I come running full speed chase the horse away he tries to fucking kick me in the face because he's so scared <laughs> I grab the cat take him out <laughs> take the can off his head and he just kind of looks at me like the fuck just happened <laughs> It was such a weird time. <laughs> no, he was perfectly fine. Took the can off his head and kind of looked at me for a minute, then just went walking away. You know how cats are. Poor horses were spooked for the whole day, though. <laughs> I don't know what had him so scared. It was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. 
a giant, giant horse, absolutely terrified of this confused cat with a can on its head. <laughs> running up to it, trying to stomp it, then running away in terror. <laughs> so dumb. Oh, man. <laughs> I know. I have weird stories. You know me. What did you expect? <laughs> I ended up going out and giving the horses apples. They were a little happier. I got you to laugh a little bit. Come here. Switch positions with me. I want you on top. I'll wrap both of my giant arms around you and my legs and just be your cocoon. <laughs> Just nuzzle into my neck. There you go. <laughs> yes, I'll keep scratching your head. Mm. Speaking of cocoons, when I was younger, we um, we got one of those monarch butterfly kits where you raise them from you know the larva. And, um, <laughs> you know me, I'm stupid. So, after we raised them and everything, we still had that big net container that we raised them in. You, like, hang it from the ceiling, and it's this cylindrical net material. Well, anyways, anyways me being the dumb dumb, reckless child I was, I decided I would try to keep bees in there. <laughs> to this day, I don't know what my thought process was for that. I don't know if I thought they were just going to build a nest and make honey, or what. <laughs> I was pretty young. Not young enough that it excuses how stupid I was, but still fairly young. Well, anyways, I I think I had like 20 bees in this thing. And I didn't know it, but there was a hole in the net. <laughs> so, my poor mom. <laughs> my poor mom. She kept finding bees in the house and <laughs> She was trying to figure out where they were coming from. She checked all the windows and looked for holes in the screens and everything. And I didn't know any of this at the time. I didn't know she was looking for where they were. So one day... I'm evil, I know it. So one day she comes up to my room and <laughs> walks in and just sees this <laughs> container full of bees <laughs> and put two and two together. <laughs> she was she was asking me why I had bees in there and <laughs> I don't even remember what I said. But I'm sure it wasn't a good excuse. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I had to get rid of the bees. I let them all out that day. Oh, and the best part of all this? I'm highly allergic to bees. Like, super allergic. <laughs> My poor mother. 
I think I've taken 10 years off for life. Uh, along with the bees, snakes getting out in the car. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We went to a nature center. It was my fault. You can't bring kid me to the nature center and not expect him to catch snakes. Mm mm. Just nope. <laughs> I had like three garter snakes in there in a box. And on our way home. <laughs> On our way home, they somehow managed to get out. <laughs> so my mother, who's very afraid of snakes, is driving down the highway <laughs> while I'm desperately trying to catch these snakes before they go up near her. <laughs> oh man, I was the worst kid. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> oh, memories. Those were the times. <laughs> well, I wasn't a bad kid. I wasn't doing it because I wanted to make her mad. I just... I loved snakes and bugs and... every critter under the sun. It was ridiculous. And she was so indulgent. She would let me bring home all these different creepy, crawly things. <laughs> mm. Your breathing is a little bit more normal. I guess my stupid stories have a purpose. Mm. Another one? Mm. Okay, I've got a good one. Um. When I was about 15, um, for Father's Day, we went fishing. This is when my parents were still together. And, uh, we were having a decent enough time, and, you know, we were just fishing. Well, anyways, I reel, reel my hook in, because some fucking fish took my bait. still mad about that. And, uh, <laughs> and anyways, I kneel down to, you know, put some bait back on. And all of a sudden, my head snaps really hard. Like, all the way to the left. And I'm trying to figure out what the fuck just happened. And, uh, <laughs> And everyone was just kind of staring at me with their mouths open. <laughs> I reached up and felt my cheek. And there was a big fish hook buried in it. Like, all the way. <laughs> it, yeah, my, it turns out it was just bad timing. Just as I was kneeling down... My dad decided to cast out, and he cast so hard, <laughs> it ended up breaking the line. That's why my head snapped so bad. Uh, he was casting so hard, it broke 10, 15 pound monofilament line, and yeah. <laughs> We were trying to figure out if I had to go to the doctor or not, and, uh, 
this old man comes walking over with players. <laughs> These fucking dirty ass hundred year old players. <laughs> and he's he wants to take it out for us. <laughs> I was just like, fuck no. We're going to the emergency room. <laughs> I'm gonna get something terrible <laughs> from him trying to use those players to get him out. So yeah, we ended up going and getting it removed. I swear the doctor was so impatient. Well, I thought it was going to be, you know, they try to push the hook through so that, you know, the barb would go out through my cheek. They could, you know, crimp the barb and then just slide it out. But... <laughs> The doctor decided to just inject anesthetic and pull. <laughs> I thought he was going to tear my fucking cheek off. <laughs> uh, they No, they got it out. I think it took like half an hour, but they got it. The best part was trying to talk because half of my face was numb from the injections, so only half of my mouth worked. <laughs> yeah, I didn't sound very good. <laughs> I could only sort of mumble like this. Like, I couldn't talk, you know, from one side of my mouth. <laughs> oh, man. You know, when I tell all these stories at once, it Kind of makes me realize how weird I am. <clears throat> yep, switch positions again. I'm gonna put a pillow against the wall. You're gonna go against the pillow, and I'm gonna go against you. surrounded from all sides <laughs> in a good way not a bad way mm. you know I don't mind being up with you even if I'm tired I still get to spend time with you and that's a win in my book No, I'm more. I'm always really, really hot. If my room isn't at like 67, I wake up sweating. <laughs> no, it's not because of you. I've just always been like that. I used to, in the winter, I used to open my window and just let it be cold. I always slept so much better. You know, there's something so nice about just being all cuddled up under a blanket, nice and warm. And you can just feel how cold it is on your face. And it's just a nice feeling. It's like your own little safe bird. <laughs> hey, I'm tired. I don't have to be very articulate. <laughs> I can't even say articulate. Oh, don't judge me. <laughs> I'm an idiot normally. When I'm low on sleep, I just become even dumber. It's okay. I know how, how anxiety goes. It's a pain in the ass. I'm never 
we're feeling safe, hyper aware, every little noise, everything just puts you on edge. I've got you. If there are any bumps in the night, I'll go check it out. But if it's a shark, I'm going to call you. (laughs) I don't know what it is about sharks. Oh, those fucking dead eyes. And you know what it is? One of the reasons I really don't like water, besides having bad experiences with it, is the fact that I hate feeling out of control and not in my element. Like, I know if, you know, a bear just randomly walked up to me in the middle of the street and started chasing me, I could at least run, you know? Yeah, bears are faster than people, but I can at least try. But when you're in the water, you're so slow compared to a shark. I'm just uh, when I saw Jaws, I was absolutely terrified. <laughs> that fucking music. <laughs> yeah, I probably shouldn't be singing, <laughs> singing, humming. I probably shouldn't be humming the Jaws theme song when you're having a mental breakdown. (laughs) Oh, come on. You know, I'm just teasing you. I have nightmares every night and wake up in a cold sweat. If anyone's crazy, it's me. And you're always there for me. My heart's racing and anxious and looking around on the verge of tears. You always just take me in your arms and tell me it's gonna be okay. You've got my back, so I've got yours. We look out for each other, that's how it goes. And that's why I love you so much. You're my partner. Everything's equal. When I'm down and anxious, you always hold me and tell me it's gonna be okay. When it's the other way around, I get to take care of you. And I love taking care of you. I never thought I would love spoiling someone as much as I love spoiling you. Do you want me to break out of the pamper basket? <laughs> no, we can do that tomorrow then. Pumice stones. Wonderful smelling creams for massages. I'll give you a massage however long you want. No. Yeah, how could I possibly want to run my hands all over your body for hours on end? It's so terrible for me. Are you crazy? Mm. Mm. We can stay in tomorrow. We can watch something on Netflix or get a movie on Amazon and just. 
I'll give you a massage or we'll watch whatever you want. How's that sound? I can make you whatever you want to eat. I like cooking. It's fun. Mm, I'm not the greatest at it, but I can make pizza, bread, chicken, meatloaf, cake, pretty much whatever. Anything you want, you got it. I can make you breakfast. We'll eat. We'll lay down on the couch and be lazy all day. I'll we'll use the pumice stone on you. I'll give you a massage. And once you're satisfied with that, we'll just hop in the shower. I'll wash your hair. Because I love spoiling it. And I'm of the opinion that if someone is special to you, you should show them every day. And you are incredibly special. You're safe, darling. You're safe. Nothing's gonna happen. I know you're knocked down on the ground right now. But you know what? I'm gonna be right there on the ground next to you until you can get up. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not a burden. Everyone has their problems. If you think they don't, you're crazy. Even the happiest people have problems. They might be different, but they have problems. Mm -hmm. Because I love you. And you accept me even with all of my problems and my issues. And you love me. And imperfections and all. And I love you. And imperfections and all. a good thing. I like that you need me. I mean, not that, you know, but it's not like I want you to date me or anything like that, but I'm not glad I can be here and you show me what you want. You spend so much time being strong and not showing him this. It means so much to me that you can let your guard down. I'm just being back in front of me. I like that I can carry him up to pray sometimes. But I may not be able to carry him off him. But I'll carry him back. I don't know how to do anything for you. Let me say the word and I'll take a bat to someone's head. <laughs> Even a shark. 
I'd take a bat to a shark's head if it was free. I mean, I might have to be standing in a boat with, you know, people with 20,000 machine guns pointing at the shark so that when we got my head, they could take care of it. But, you know, I'd give it a shot. something about it. I've just never felt this committed or loyal to someone before. And you know me, I mean, I can be fickle. <laughs> but with you, I'm complete opposite. You say the word and I'll be there. You can't sleep or you just want some company. Yeah. I want to be there. and problems, it always reminds me of handmade things. One of the reasons I love handmade items is that if you look closely enough, you can see all the little imperfections. All of the little unique things. And I don't think they're flaws. It's just... Special and unique. That's how I see it. Anything out there and anything in your head. I've got your job. I love you to pieces. Try to get a few hours of sleep, though. Mm. I just drift off, feeling my body heat, feeling my breath on your head.
be of sleep. Thank you. 